Last year, I went to Poland. I drove hundreds of miles across Europe to hang with the Italiano Squadre Car Club for three days of cars, drink and fun. It was without a doubt the best thing I've ever done even factoring in the slightly eventful return journey. But with the Super Sicento completely rebuilt, continually modified and recently resprayed, I was determined to go again this year, enjoy the same phenomenal experience and make it back home in one piece. With over 800 miles to get to Zhirkov where the meet was being held once again, I was up at 2.15am and on the road by 3.15 to make the Euro Tunnel and get into France. As the first glows of sunlight began trickling into the sky, I made it to the Euro Tunnel, grabbed my ticket and prepared for boarding. <laughs> We're at the Euro Tunnel. It's been a bit of a wild goose chase to get here, to be honest, because Google Maps, for some reason, thinks that the most direct route from my house to the Channel Tunnel is down some very narrow, very muddy, very wet, and very sketchy country roads. Hence why the car is quite a lot dirtier than I was hoping it would be after having only done about 45, 50 miles. So I'm a bit annoyed about that, but at some point along the route, I do want to give the car a damn good clean anyway, so it's looking its best for the show. and. I'm so excited. It was a riot last year and this year it's going to be a day longer than last year's event. There's more stuff planned, there's going to be a lot more people there and because a lot of people who are from Germany, from Poland, from the Netherlands, from wherever saw my video from last year, they know I'm coming this year and they've been watching the progress for the Super Sicento build up so not only am I going to love the event as I did last year but people are actually looking forward to seeing me and the Super Sicento at this event. I am... I'm so stoked. This was an epic event, one of the highlights of my year. In fact, one of the highlights of my life last year. Absolutely loved it. And now we need to get on the way to France so we can do it all over again. Eventually we made it to Calais and under the guidance of Jason, my new Australian sat-nav voice, I began the journey to Poland. about the way they do it is just better than ours. For example, now I'm driving along at 80 miles an hour. That's 80 miles an hour. This would be illegal on any British road. This would be completely illegal. The government and the DVLA deem what I'm doing now to be completely unsafe and reckless and I'll almost certainly be killed just by doing it. Doesn't feel very unsafe to me. So, whilst the Europeans have got speed limits right, I have got sustenance right, because much like last time, I've got plenty of snacks and high energy things to keep me going on this extremely long drive, because of course I've got fruit, I've got chocolate, I've got some nice brioche things, I've got cereal bars, I've got the faithful cans of Monster, and of course I've got the ultimate travel companion, my jelly babies, in the passenger seat as well, because the thing is, on a trip like this, it's important that you stay energised, you stay focused, because take your eyes off the road for a minute like talking to a camera or anything like that and potentially you could be in trouble and the good news is this time round I'm not going quite as far on day one because last time 660 miles in one day was dreadful I mean I did it and I'm proud of myself for doing it I'm proud of the Super Sicento for doing it but it ruined me, if I'm honest. I've never been so ruined after a drive as I was then. Today, a little bit more sensible because we're gonna be stopping off in Magdeburg and that is a bit further back than Potsdam where I stayed last time. So from the Euro Tunnel port in Calais, right the way to the hotel tonight, we're looking at a distance of around about 490 miles. That's still massive, but it's 170 miles less than what I did last time. This can only be a good thing. Sadly, the weather had other ideas, and as with last time, France proved to be a total washout. We soldiered on despite the weather, but heavy rain.
rain on fast roads causes traffic and inevitably delays. Some time later the rain eased off and as the sun came out we made light work of Belgium and crossed over into the Netherlands. First proper stop of the trip, we've got about 230 miles under our belt since we left home at quarter past three this morning. How am I still up? I've had four hours sleep. But the important thing is, we're going really, really well. We've hit the odd spot of traffic with roadblocks here and there, but on the whole, the Super Sargento is doing as awesome as it ever did. I've just put some fuel in it, but it's nowhere near empty, and I've worked out it's averaging around 47 miles to the gallon, which is wicked. Take that twin air engine. I left the car with the bonnet up just for a few minutes just to get some heat out of the engine bay because it wasn't overheating or anything, but it's just good practice to make sure your engine's cool. I'm gonna have a drink and a snack. The car's had a snack and then I think we can get back on the road. Apart from losing a mirror end cap, the journey was going well, so I changed into shorts and got back on the road to Germany. Once there, I paid particular attention, the memories of last year still fresh on my mind. I needn't have worried though. Occasional autobahn traffic was our only issue, and with the day turning out gorgeous and the Super Sicento making awesome progress, I started to get a bit emotional. Never fails to amaze me this car, it's like everything I could want a car to do and everything I would ask of a car, this does. As a daily driver it's comfortable enough, I can fit all my stuff in it, it's economical as we've proven and it's fun to drive at normal, slow, legal speeds because you can chuck it around it feels so light and busy and it's doing this hundreds and hundreds of miles through Europe, hardly using any fuel, keeping up with traffic, being really comfortable and continue to make me smile and making other people smile because it's something different the more time I spend with this car the more adventures we go on together the more stuff we do the more I'm impressed with it and the more I fall in love with it my partner and I made good progress through Germany slowly eating through our 900 kilometer first day as the sun went down on a long hot challenging but successful day one, Jason guided us into the pretty but badly cobbled streets of Magdeburg and our hotel for the night. Magdeburg, done. It's been a long, hot and at times quite difficult day but in the end we've done it. 540 miles in one day. No it wasn't as bad as the 660 we did last year but frankly it was still a massive achievement. I'm so proud of the Super Sicento. It's done a fantastic job. Everything I've asked it today, it's been comfortable. It's not been too noisy because of all that sound ending we've done. It's relatively economical, around 46 to the gallon at a cruise, which is fantastic. It's just been really, really good fun and a great way to get here, to be honest. Anyway, I'm now gonna go and check into my hotel and being that Hamburg is only 30 kilometers down the road, I think I need to sample some of the local cuisine. Morning, you join me on day two. We are in Magdeburg today, and today we are heading into Poland. The weather's looking up, it's nice and warm. I've got a relatively short 270-ish mile drive to do today. Yes, that's one of the short drives on this journey. And then we're back in Poland, and I'm, I'm so excited. I can't wait to be back there, see all the guys again, see all the cars again, and have a fantastic time. So without further ado, let's get on the road. A Ford Maverick and a Lamborghini Urus. Now that is an odd combination. I really, really hope that is part exchanged for that. Questionable car swaps aside though, we got back onto the Autobahn, basking in the heat of another gorgeous German day. Morning progress was good, and as storming Autobahn became tree circle dual carriageway, I knew we were getting close. And just a short while later, Auf Wiedersehen Deutschland und Danke und Jane Dobry Polska. Haha, <laughs> that's it. We are now a Officially, legally, and politically in Poland. You can see there, and that means we're just 140 miles 
from Zhirkov, from the event. I've seen the guys from Italiano Squadra again. I cannot wait. So now we're officially in Poland. We're on the home stretch. Poland's gorgeous landscape was immediately familiar, and before too long, I was reminded of another reason I love this country so very much. It's just more relaxed and more peaceful and more serene than most of Europe is. In Germany, you've got three lane autobahns with everyone doing 100 miles an hour or more in a lot of cases. Everyone's right up your ass to try and get you out of the way. There's trucks everywhere. You have to be concentrating with all of your mental power 110% of the time because it's so intense and stressful. By comparison, since I got into Poland, the 140-ish miles I've had to do between the Polish-German border and Zhirkov, where I'm actually going, 110 miles of that there or thereabouts has been on this one road, which is the A2 Autostrada Wolnoszki, if that looks like. I do apologise to anyone Polish watching, that was probably hideously wrong. It's a two-lane road, the speed limit is 85 miles an hour, which is around about 120, 130 kilometres, and you can sit at what you like. My comfortable speed for touring in the Super Sicento is between 70 and 80 miles an hour, there thereabouts, and you can do it the whole time. There's two lanes, there's not a great deal of trucks, there's not a great deal of other cars, and because there isn't a huge amount of traffic, there are cars that are doing 85 or 90 in the fast lane, which is of course the left in Poland, but it's easy to get out their way, because there's not enough trucks that are blocking you from getting back into the slow lane, so you just go into the fast lane, do 75 or 80 to get past all the trucks, and then once you're past, I can see a guy coming up behind me now, all I've got to do is tuck in. When I was driving in Germany, I was tense the whole time, partly because of what happened last time, and partly because it's just intense to drive in Germany, as I said, it's just always busy, 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 don't make a mistake, know where you want to go and get there without making any distractions or hold-ups for anyone else. In Poland, it's just that little bit more relaxed, that little bit more easy going. Get where you want to go, don't get in anyone's way, and enjoy it. And that's one of the reasons why I love driving here and why I love this country in general so very much. Easy cruising meant that we covered ground quickly, and with the weather gorgeous and the finish line ever closer, I was getting more and more excited. High speed auto routes turned to small rural roads, and before too long... We've done it! There it is! There's the gate! We're here! UK to Poland in two days! We're here. Well done, little mate. What an adventure. That's been an awesome drive, awesome, epic road trip. But of course, the adventure only just beginning.